Good morning, friends, and welcome to this service of worship from St. Paul United Methodist Church downtown. We invite you to join us for worship where you are at home, uh, to stand for the hymns as you're able and, and recite the creed and worship uh, through the Internet as we give praise to the Lord this day. Our first hymn is number 715, Rejoice the Lord is King. I invite you to stand as you're able. the Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. I invite you to remain standing as you're able as we unite in affirming our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, and, earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, Son our Lord, who was, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, dead, and buried. The, the third day He rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now we're going to move into a time of prayer. Normally we would share our prayer concerns and our joys with one another, but um, we're not able to do that um, face to face, but we would love for you to send in your prayer request online. Um, you can email prayer at stpaulos.org. Send us a Facebook message. Uh, your pastors are here for you and we, um, want to connect with you online however we can. So now would you join me in prayer? Dear Lord, we recognize that we have so many needs right now. We thank you that you are such a faithful God that we can turn to in our time of need. Lord, we pray for all those who are hurting, those who are sick, those who are alone. Lord, we thank you that your presence is always with us. Help us to recognize 
recognize that you are with us. Lord, bring your healing, bring your comfort, bring your peace to this world. God, we pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on this earth. We know that you are present and you're moving. And Lord, we want to be a part of that. So Lord, we, we ask you to make it on earth as it is in heaven. We plead with you to move in power in our world. We ask you to be with our leaders, our leaders in the government and in healthcare. Would you give them wisdom and guidance? Would you help us to know how to navigate um, this uncertain and unknown situation? Lord, help us to remain faithful disciples, even as we are worshiping in a new and different way. Help us to stay connected to you and your Holy Spirit. Lord, would you bear the fruits of your Holy Spirit in our lives of love and joy and peace? Lord, we ask that you would draw us together in unity as a church family and unite us even as we're distanced. Lord, shine your light in the darkness. Shine your light so that all would know that you are truly the King of kings and Lord of lords. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we're going to move into a time of offering. Even though we are worshiping at a distance, it is still important that we worship God through our tithes and offering. So we ask that in this time that you continue to partner with St. Paul in that way. That we have a couple ways that you can give. First, you can always mail in your check. Just address it to P.O. Box 909, Ocean Springs, Mississippi. And then the zip code is 39566. We also have ways for you to give online. Simply in your URL, type give .stpaulos.org and we'd love for you to partner with us during this time as we seek to save lives and advance God's kingdom on this earth. Today's scripture reading comes from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 13 as well as Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 13. Hear God's word. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand Firm. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. This is the word of God. For the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. God is with us. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone.
My friends, we continue our series on the Lord's Prayer today, focusing on the last, uh, the last phrase that we will focus on for the season of Lent, deliver us from evil or deliver us from the time of trial. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, we give you thanks that in your mercy you hear us whenever we cry out to you. As we focus on all the help that you stand ready to provide for us this day, fill our hearts with your wisdom, with your assurance, and with the will to live in the way of Jesus in all that we say and do. In his name we pray. Amen. We are mindful of how the Christian life is no safe harbor. Uh, it is not secure from storms and struggle. Almost anyone will tell you that. And we read in the Gospels even uh, about how at one time the disciples were out at sea, literally out at sea, with Jesus on the Sea of Galilee when a storm came up. Jesus was asleep in the boat, but uh, the storm came up, the wind howled, and the waves began to lift the boat, and they cried out, Lord, save us. And it's not uncommon for us to have the same kind of, of plea, feel the same kind of thing, and cry out to God, Lord, save me. Lord, help us. Words like save and deliver us and rescue us and trial are really words of crisis. And they are really all in that phrase of the Lord's Prayer that we're looking at today as we wind up this series uh, during the season of Lent. We, they're there in that phrase, lead us not into temptation or, or, or lead us, deliver us from the time of trial, depending on your translation, but deliver us from the evil one. Deliver us from evil. Rescue is a word uh, that also applies. Save us, rescue us from the time of trial. And I think that word is true to what Jesus' prayer, the phrase of this prayer says, but also is a way to get a point of reference for what Jesus is saying, is advising us to do when we pray that phrase rescue. It's not a word maybe that pops up in everyday conversation, although at certain times uh, in our world and crises in our world it does, but almost everyone has an idea about what it means. It's to bring someone or something out of danger and to save. Now we've got rescue crews, thank the Lord, who dedicated, dedicated people whose mission is to go out to those who are in need to save others who were in very dangerous situations. Sometimes they put themselves in harm's way. We are mindful, of course, very mindful during this time of all the medical personnel who are doing that now, as well as people like, like firemen and paramedics and specialized workers rushing to save, to provide life-saving work as it's needed. But rescue doesn't have to come to us in through an ambulance or a bright red fire engine, uh, think about what rescue means in our lives, even in a more kind of mundane or regular way. It might, it might not seem this way at first, but think of all the ways that we really are kind of hunger for rescue in, in the popular world, in the popular culture. Uh, for at least a better part of a century, we've kind of been... Uh, fascinated, lifted up by stories of heroes, even superheroes. When I was coming up, it was Batman and Superman, um, a, you know, dating myself quite a bit. Now we have all kinds of guardians of the galaxy, uh, heroes and superheroes who rescue people, not just from, you know, all the evil on earth, but all, all, all the planets, all the galaxy. And sometimes maybe we'd like to be the hero or the heroine and save the day for all the people around us and take a stand against the forces of evil and the legion of doom that threatens to overwhelm the world. We want, to, we want rescue in our lives, not just in the fictional world, but in reality. You know, you might put it this way, how many of us, how many have been in a situation where we find ourselves and we would really rather be somewhere else? <laughs> we say, uh, rescue me, please. Uh, I can't help but think of some students who are, may feel like they have been rescued from a certain class that they uh, really were not that, that, that you know, fond of during this time. Of course, the bad thing is we'll have to go back later and deal with that. But that's the same with business meetings and other things. Jesus told a little story about a man who stockpiled wealth. 
he was a man who was wealthy already, but then he had this tremendous crop. And he said, what am I going to do with all this food, you know? Uh, it's just overwhelming. I know what I'll do. I'll tear down all my silos, all my storage bins, and I'm going to build big ones, and I'm going to store it all in there, and then I'm just done. I can do anything I please. Uh, and, so, and so he did that, but it didn't work out so well for him in the end. In fact, his end came soon. <laughs> and he, he had hoped to find deliverance in the abundance of, through the abundance of possessions, through a comfortable lifestyle, through you know, a sizable retirement account. But the teeth in that story, I think, is that, that many of us can relate to that man's notion. We want rescue that brings us safety, and the truth be told, we need rescue. We just have the wrong notions about the forms of rescue that we need. We need rescue in our lives really because we are in danger. Sometimes we're very aware of this, as in a heightened awareness now we have of this virus that's floating around. But other times we're, we don't think about it so much, but we're just as susceptible. That which we've built up around us with our imperfect hands just can fall down anytime. And we need to be rescued from dangers to life and limb that surround us. We're always at the whims of accidents, things, again, both seen and unseen, like a virus. And we need to be rescued from evil people, people who have bad intentions, who plan to steal and hurt and kill and exploit. And we need, of course, to be rescued from illness and disease. We need to be rescued also from attitudes that place more emphasis on personal comfort than in reaching out to those in need, such as the rich man who stored all his goods. And we need to be rescued from living lives that depend on the things of this world instead of depending on God for the most part. We need rescue, and this is why we pray in this phrase, and lead us not into temptation, our, our lead us, deliver us, rescue us from the time of trial, and deliver us from the evil one. With these words, we pray for rescue. In the, in the text, the Greek text, Greek text, it literally re it reads, but deliver us from the evil one. Evil is real and powerful, and it's not only out there, my friends, uh, unfortunately, out there in other people or in the world. It's present and active in each of us. Uh, what is more, evil is more than the sum total of all the evil impulses and actions that we and other people engage in. So think of it this way. When we human beings, we human creatures, worship that which is not God, we give authority to the forces of destruction and the powers that seek to work us harm. And those forces gain a foothold. They gain a power that, taken all together, cause many wise people who've come to discern it to give it a name, uh, whether it's Satan or the accuser. Or the devil. The evil one is, is not equal and opposite to God, but it or he, however you would address him, is a potent force uh, opposed to God's good creation. And the evil one is our chief enemy. He's the one who sets out to see that we do not, as we have previously prayed, keep God's name holy. Our that God's will would be done and his kingdom would come among us. The evil one does not want us to get our daily bread and to be thankful for it. He does not want us to have a clear conscience when it comes uh, to the forgiveness of sins of what God proclaims in Jesus Christ to be true, that we are forgiven in him. He's the one who wages war against us, and it is against this, this devil and all the evil that we pray, from which we pray to be rescued. Martin Luther in the 16th century, century was writing about this very phrase, the Lord's Prayer. He said, so there's nothing, there is nothing for us to do upon earth but to pray against this arch enemy without stopping. For unless God preserved us, we would not be safe from this enemy even for an hour. And now, Luther also notes that this petition of the Lord's Prayer is something of a summary of all, all the ones that have preceded it. 
You know, if we are asking to be delivered from evil and the evil one, we are also asking that God's name would be honored and that we would honor God's name as God and that his kingdom would come among us and his will would be done in our lives. And and this is the good news, both in this present life and ultimately in the life to come, that that is the result of the rescue. We are delivered, we are delivered from the evil and delivered into a restored relationship with a God who gives himself to us. When we need rescue, he is the one to whom we can turn. And so I think part of, a big part of our worship is acknowledge, acknowledging this, that God is the only source of our true rescue, whether it's physical, spiritual. He is the one who gives us gives our lives as a gift, and he is the one who preserves them. Do you remember Psalm 21? The Lord will keep you from all evil. The Lord will keep your life. He will keep you. You're going out, and you're coming in from this time and forevermore. Uh, Perhaps not as much of the going out these days, but the Lord will keep us in everything, is what we say. Again, perhaps you've seen dramatic stories of rescue and any number of stories on TV and the media, and sometimes someone steps forward and acts heroic, heroically and risks his or her life to bring a stranger out of harm's way or to rescue them. And uh, sometimes we read that a strong friendship is developed between the rescuer and the one who, is, who has been saved. Two people joined by a struggle, a struggle between life and death. Well, we certainly know that's true when we talk about rescue animals as well, isn't it true? The human and the animal. But as Christians, we have been connected by an even stronger bond to the one who saved us from death. Jesus, who taught us how to pray, took our place on the cross to rescue us from this perilous situation into which we, we have thrown ourselves. And we continue to do that. He acted heroically. He was the hero, taking the extreme measure of giving up his life to bring us out of death. He delivered us from the evil and the evil one. And in baptism, our baptism in him, he binds us to himself with a bond that the evil one cannot break. The powers that be now rage against this prayer when we pray it, as Jesus taught us. They can't stand to have one free person running loose, you know, so that they may then just throw off the chains when we say, Our Father, save us. But those of us who've prayed that prayer in time of need, in that hour of deep darkness, can testify, as one of our songs says, There's, There is power in the name of Jesus, a wonder working power to break every chain. So Jesus' victory over evil is real and powerful. It's a one-time for all-time victory, but it's one that we again live into and are invited to experience as we faithfully pray this prayer Jesus taught us. Uh, It's not as evil is. It too is not only out there, but it's available to us here and now for each of us. And when we turn from our idols, and worship the God we see revealed at Calvary, Jesus on the cross, that moment we turn from darkness to the light. When we pray, deliver us from evil or or from the evil one, we inhale the victory of the cross. What a gift that is. And with his help and in his power, we hold the line for another moment, another hour, another day against all the forces of destruction within ourselves in our world. Jesus truly invites us to come and not only join the movement, but continue in the movement as together we pray, your will be done. Deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you are strong to save. You lead us not into temptation. You deliver us from evil and the evil one. Your son defeated sin and death and the devil so that we may enjoy the fruits of his labor. Grant unto us faithfulness, the trust in this life, especially when we 
experience what feel like attacks of misery or misfortune or times that we are uncertain or just are, are really beaten down by what seems to be evil. Having rescued us from our sin, lead us forward. Set our minds on things that are above and deliver us safe into your kingdom, which has no end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our final hymn is Near to the Heart of God, and I invite you to stand as we sing together. Thank you for joining us for this uh, service of worship from St. Paul downtown. We also invite you to join us for Live and 11 11 service uh, coming up shortly. And it can be found uh, as in real time in a little while, as well as recorded on YouTube. Also take advantage of the other devotions and things that we have at the St. Paul worship, worship site. Hear this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of God's Holy Spirit abide with you and keep you now and evermore. Amen.